And ground and three, ground and three, one, two, three. Four. And a very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Bronco Stadium at Mile High. Yeah, y'all know what time it is. Y'all better tune in. Monday night football, baby. As the Denver Broncos play host to the Kansas City Chiefs. Time, baby, Monday night. Man, it's time to put the strap on them. Let's go. Together on three, one, two, three, go. A heartbreaking loss for the Broncos, 27 to 23 to the Chiefs, their sixth consecutive loss against Kansas City. Hello and thank you for joining us for the Broncos Film Review. I'm Phil Bellani, alongside Matt Boyer, Steve Atwater, and Ray Crockett. Guys, what do you think about the loss? It seemed like they were right there, then they blew the lead. Well, it's disappointing because first and foremost, you worked that hard at home and everything was working in your favor as far as they were dropping passes everything you wanted a team to do on the road they was giving it to us and then we're up by 10 in the fourth quarter somehow some way you have to maintain that lead yeah i, I agree uh I, I think that we came out, we didn't play as good a game as, as we would have played, but we played much better than a lot of people thought as well. A lot of people were thinking that the team was going to get blown out, that Kansas City Chiefs was going to put up 40, 50 points on us. That didn't happen. Uh, I can say this. I think this is a, 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 a point to where this team can use this game and, and say, all right, this is the baseline for us. We can't go back to where we were, but this could be a starting point for us. And if we don't get worse, we get better from here, we can have a really successful season. It's a tale of two halves, like Ray said. I mean, you know, they came out. We, it looked like they competed with one of the best teams in the NFL. And then someplace in the middle of the third quarter, it all changed. Yeah, the Broncos got off to a good start, a field goal on the opening drive. An attempt for Brandon McManus of 42 yards. Snap placement, McManus with 20 of leg, and it is good from 42. Mahomes, he's going to try to get there on his own, and he does so with ease. Showtime. Keenum loads it up, wants a home run ball, wants Sutton there. Sutton is interfered with, and he makes the catch. No flag, but Sutton gets up and says, come get me. 23-yard line the spot. He beat Kendall Fuller on a perfectly thrown pass of 42 yards. They toss it right side. And Kansas City springs it out. A good cut by Freeman. Inside the 10. Inside the 5. He's got a touchdown. What a run. The offensive line did a great job today. I mean, they were really aggressive. They were on their blocks. And uh, the running back room, uh, we just executed off that. And they, they, got, they uh, got the job done for us. The Broncos were up 13-10 to 10 at halftime. And that was pretty good against a Chiefs team that was outscoring its opponents 49-6 to 6 in the first quarter. It looked like the defense was being aggressive. Yeah, and the thing that I always said about this team is that when you get a young quarterback, you have to do some things as far as trying to confuse him. I know he's been good and all prolific and whatever other word you want to use, but he's still young. He's still basically a first-year guy, and we did that for the most part. We disguised a lot. The corners, I was really impressed. They right. moved around. They got their hands on guys. So for the most part, I was really impressed with Joe Woods. You have to give him credit for the game that he called in the first half. They played pretty well. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, though, Steve, those rookies were getting in the mix. Royce Freeman had one heck of a touchdown. Yeah, he had a great touchdown. Um, of course, uh, we got the, the great catch from Cortland Sutton down the sideline. A couple of great runs by Phillip Lindsay as well. And Royce Freeman, man, he finished that off with a great power run, uh, bowling over some of the linebackers and, you know, showed the shiftiness as well, man. That was a great run by him. Yeah, Royce Freeman has three touchdowns this season, tied with Saquon Barkley for the most uh, among uh, rookie running backs. Uh, Matt, what did you think of the first half? Well, I thought that we just talked about the rookies. I thought while well, the runs were good, the blocking was also good. You and I were talking in the press box. Andy Janovich played very, very well picking up blitzes, finding those holes, opening up seams for guys like Lindsey and Freeman on the edge. I also thought Jeff Hyreman played extremely well on the edge. On that touchdown by Freeman, it was Hyreman's block on the edge that allowed him to kind of buy some time and then cut up field. So I think that those two guys, not they're, they're not going to show up in the stat sheet for those plays, but I thought they contributed a really, really good amount in that first half. Well, the problem was though our tackles. Yep. That's where we need to find somehow, somewhere. We have to find some guys who can block on the edge because Bowles struggled. Oh, my God, he had a lot of struggles in the game. And now Valdir is out. So what are we going to do there? That's going to be something that we have to look forward to in the next weeks to come is how are we going to somehow, some way fix that. 
Yeah, it seems like Case holds the ball just to the last second, and every time then he gets rid of it, uh, always giving the fans a little bit of a scare that he's going to lose the ball. The Broncos were up 13-10 at half. The Chiefs tied the game, and then the Broncos made a mistake. Five-man pressure, Keenan deep in the pocket. Now floats one to the side. He's got Hyman there. Hyman battles, and does he catch it? Or did Kansas City intercept it? KC thinks they've got the ball, and the officials say they do. That was a heck of a play by Eric Murray. Here's the handoff again to Lindsay on second down and goal. And I think he works to the goal line, and it is a Denver touchdown. It comes down to our offensive line. They're out there moving people. We're doing our job, and, and that's what it's about. And the offensive line's doing their job. But we gotta come up with we gotta come up with uh, ways to make more plays. Here's Kelsey in for the score. I think they caught this Bronco defense not being ready, guys. They were late coming back on the field. Mahomes recognized it. The handoff to Hunt running left. Hunt is to the goal line, and Kansas City has a touchdown. So the Chiefs with 139 left, bounce in front, 26-23. Keenum looks right, throws the ball that is wide open. Hyman has it inside the 40, inside the 35. First down inside the 30. Clock runs, 47-46. Here's your ball game, fourth down. Desperate times. Oh, he tried to lateral it. He was trying to lateral it to Sanders. And instead, it goes down to the ground. So the Broncos end up losing 27 to 23. They had their chances. They had the Chiefs offense in second and 30. Somehow they got it. Man, second and 30, it's one of those plays where, Steve, you and I know when you get second and 30, we want that ball out of the quarterback's hand as quickly as possible. And, and that's the one time that I felt that Joe Woods may have kind of upthought himself. I think that early he was thinking they, they will be ready for the blitz. But in that situation, you have to all bliss. You have to bliss Mahomes. You have to contain. And you have to say, we know what you're running. You're going to run a hitch, a slant, or you're going to throw a quick fade. And, and we can defend those things. Yeah, well, they, they, it looked like they were playing man-to-man -man defense, but they just didn't have the pressure to go along it with it. It was man-free. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, right, right. Uh, the corners, they had the same responsibility, except for a little bit of help in, in the middle. And it looks like a linebacker was holding there in the middle, kind of a, a hole player. I'm not sure if he was spying the quarterback or if he was waiting to pick up a crossing route or what. In that situation, one, we got to get uh, more pressure, and two, we can't let that contain uh, get, get, get breached. And uh, that's exactly what happened. A lot of people are going to talk about the third and seven, the, the play clock going to zero. That was the big headline. However, like you guys just mentioned, when you've got second and 30, I mean, it shouldn't have been third and seven. It probably should have been something right. closer to like third and 15, third and 12. So yeah, I think that everybody's gonna talk about the play clock going to zero, but that second and 30 really changed the game. Yeah, and you think about it. Chris Harris was walking off the field, second and 30, second and 30. When you have a corner repeating that to yourself, that lets you know he knows that they should have been in a different defense at that time, and there's no way you let a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who's slippery anyway as far as getting out right. of the pocket, there's no way you rush him at all elements and you go A, B, C, D gap, all filled in, make him throw the ball. With all the pass rushes the Broncos had, they never really got to him ever. I mean, even on the left-handed throw he had, Vaughn was just diving, trying to grab him, uh, just the ankles. And see, here's the thing that uh, you, the game plan was okay what Joe Woods wanted to do. I could see it happening. He wanted to brush him from the left side. He's a right-handed quarterback. Make him run. That's the way I would do yes, it. Yes, make right. him run and throw with his right hand. And that one, man, hey, that was a magician. He just <laughs> put it in his left hand and kind of shot put it at that thing. That's when you have to say, okay, this kid is the real deal. We're going to just all bliss him and put him in all areas and, and try to stop him that way. I would take my chances on him trying to throw a ball with his left hand. Then no I would flush him out to the right and where his strength is. He, he can throw darts from that right side. Uh, so I'd much rather put pressure on the other side and make him go left. The body positions too. I mean, you think about the play to Kelsey. He's running to his oh, left man. and then throwing back across his body to the right in stride. I mean, we talked about it last week, the throw that he made against the Niners. I mean, that was a very, very similar throw, just showing off the athleticism, showing off the, uh, the feel for the ball. And I can say that I, I don't think that the Kansas City Chiefs can beat you consistently by doing those types of things, throwing no, left hand no, and then come, no. throwing back across the field. So I want to, I want him to do that. I, that's why I want to force him to go that way and make those difficult types of throws. I think the the thing we have to do too, as our ends, you're talking about Von Miller, Shane Ray. We know these guys are speed rushers. Everybody else in the league knows that as well. So a lot of these quarterbacks are letting them push up past them and then coming up and flushing back out. 
they have to start retracing their steps. Right. Get to the level of the quarterback, spin, and come back down. You can't just run by quarterbacks anymore. The other play that the Broncos fans are probably waking up feeling sick about is Case Keenum overthrowing it to Demarius Thomas. You think that if DT makes that catch, that's game over. That's Broncos win that game. And, and as a quarterback, you want to, you're talking about bringing Case in, paying him $36 million. We know that that's still not the top level of quarterbacks. But when you hand the quarterback the keys, those are the throws that you have to make. Because if you think about last year and the previous year, the, that's exactly where we struggled. Hitting guys that are wide open and under throwing guys like he did on the corner out to Hireman. Yeah. Those are the throws that you have to make as a quarterback if you want to be, you know, considered a good one. Yeah, and I, I can say, uh, you know, it, it, it was a difficult situation. And uh, when Case released the pass, it looks like the cornerback was in a good position to actually try and make a play on the ball. But of course, he, he faded off because they were playing cover two. Right. But also from the end zone view, it looks like uh, the defensive tackle uh, actually got a hand up at the last minute and made him have to throw it a little bit higher right. to get the pass there. Uh, but I, I, I would still say I, I'm sure that Case Keenan wouldn't make any excuses and I'm not going to make any, any excuses for him either. Yeah. Uh, that's the play that he has to make, and I, I know he'll he'll make some of those plays. And that's for all about road. timing, Steve. You know that he he had to basically hold the safety, so he's looking at the safety to keep in there. That's really a blind throw. That's what it is in cover two. You know the corner is going to drop off, but corners myself, we're taught to drop off. If the quarterback is not looking, then we can you know, level off. So he had to hold his face straight and make a blind throw. That's something timing has to come with that. Case Keenum hasn't thrown a touchdown pass since that week one game winner to Demarius Thomas in the corner there. So uh, hopefully they can get back on track this week. Maybe show a little bit of character this week coming off of two losses, now traveling across the country, playing a pretty good Jets team. Is it too early to say must win? No, I, I feel it's a must win, and not only is it a must win, I, I think it's a must play well for Case Keenum. Right now, he has a quarterback rating around 72%. If you go back to last year, we were at 73 and 72 with the other guys. I won't even mention their names. <laughs> so if we're talking about an upgrade here, this is a must win and a must play well for Case Keenum, not only for the team, but for himself as well. Yeah, I, I think this is a must win because you think a, after this game, now we got next week, we got the Rams coming up, right? And, uh, you know, that's going to be a difficult game in itself. So we don't even want to talk about them right now. But I would say, yeah, we're in a must win situation. It's still early on in the season. So, uh, you know, you, some things could happen later on. But I would like the guys to look at it that way, though. Last week was a pivot point. We talk about it a lot. There are certain times and schedules where you go back when the season's over and you look at where did things turn. And I think that, like last year, that loss to the Giants was a pivot point for the Broncos. This game is showing up kind of in the same same uh, point in the schedule. You want to see them respond. The Broncos weren't able to respond last year, but if they can respond this year, I think it can totally change the season. The Broncos were that close to being tied for the division lead at 3-1 and with the Chiefs. and said the Chiefs improved to 4-0, and and now the Broncos are 2-2 two two heading to New York. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Broncos Film Review. For Ray Crockett, Steve Atwater, Matt Boyer, I'm Phil Milani, thanks for checking it out.